Okay, I, I think I think we can start. We can continue. <coughs> so we'll come after the lunch. I hope I will not talk you into the sleep. So if you feel sleepy, just raise your hand, and I will try to speak more silently and more slowly to not to distract you a lot. And uh, so uh, in this lesson, okay, we sh we should finish the let's say safety characteristics of INC and electrical systems. So we will continue with the presentation, and I, I hope at, at the end we will have, let's say, more time for discussions. And uh, nevertheless, at the end of the day, there is, I think, half an hour for also discussions. So, so we can, if there will be more questions, uh, so then we can also have discussion at the end of the of the day. So let let let's continue. So we have before the lunch, we have spoken about the most of the, let's say, basic safety, let's say, design requirements. So uh, I would like to finish them. Then uh, I think I, I, I would like to describe something with regard to testability and maintainability of the systems. I would like to, let's say, describe some specific with regard to digital systems, because they are nowadays used very often, mostly in INC, but in electrical systems as well, to give you some basic information about the development process itself. And at the end, we have enough, enough time, so at least some a little bit basic information about cybersecurity. Okay, so let's start. So fail-safe design. Again, this principle was already mentioned uh, in uh, previous presentations. <clears throat> so in fact, we, we want the equipment to, to fail in some, let's say, defined way. So we don't want some unpredictable behavior of the, of the equipment. So for example, if we consider some loss of power or some, let's say, failure which can happen, so we want the equipment to, let's say, put itself to some predefined or predetermined conditions or state. So for example, some output relays of some systems are put without, electric, without let's say, power supply, they are put to some predefined, let's say, position. So, so the methods, how, how to check and evaluate it, there, there are more. For example, there are fault tree analysis or failure mode effect analysis. We decompose the system and evaluate, okay, what would happen with the system if, if one particular, let's say, subsystem fails. Uh, what is, let's say, quite challenging, the, let's say, safe state, perhaps it's not safe. For, for It's safe for one event, but maybe not very safe for another event. So, consideration have to be put to, to this, and uh, there can be some discussion what exactly the safe state it is. Uh, but this, this is the, let's say, the, the, the basic approach, what we have to do. What is the problems are, let's say, the systematic errors in the design. Let's say specifically, if we develop some software and if, if we introduce some error, some, there's some fault in the software. So the problem is that we can't predict what will happen with the, with the equipment, because if the software, if there is something fault, so it, it, it can do almost anything. Eh? So there is a very big effort to avoid such errors. And again, it, uh, it, the, the, let's say how to deal it is, in fact, application of diversity and, and, and so on, but very high quality development process is one of the, let's say, most important, um, let's say, um, remedy for, for these types of, of, of errors or, or problems. And we will, we will speak about it a little bit in, in, more, in more details a little bit, little bit later. So here are some, let's say, just examples how we can implement some fail-safe design features in, in, in our equipment. It's, of course, it's very specific for different type of equipment. We can find different solutions. So this is just an example for, for you. So independence, uh, we, we spoke a lot about independence. Data validation, so basically the re receiving system check the data which uh, it receives. For example, if it's out of range or some, let's say, nonsense value. And uh, so, 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 so the aim is to, let's say, not to propagate the failures. Data buffering, so it's something which is, let's say, simplified in this simplified scheme. So basically, if we have some communication link and uh, some receiving station, so usually what is done, so the communication link puts the data to some shared register with its own, let's say, time cycle, 
uh, without any interference with the, let's say, receiving station itself. And then a receiving station with its own, let's say, time cycle, when it needs, it reads the data from the register and, for example, writes down the, the output data. So the independence is uh, there because if, for example, this link uh, turns crazy and start, for example, generate or some station, uh, try to overwhelm the, the link, so the, the station has its own cycle and perhaps they will, uh, it will find that, for example, these data are not refreshed or are some, let's say, uh, not valid, but it will continue the operation and can have some, let's say, outputs, for example, for some hardwired outputs to the technology and uh, it's not, let's say, influenced by the fault of this communication link. So, so this is another example how, how, how to deal with, let's say, independence and, and uh, fail-safe design. Uh, yeah, when, for example, the relays are de-energized, so they should switch to some predefined condition, use one directional communication links, and, and things like that. Of course, if we implement some, let's say, specific, for example, data validation uh, algorithms, so we have to also consider that such algorithms could, could fail. So, yeah, so we have to implement such algorithms in the same rules as it, 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 because it's part of the safety system, so same let's say, methods and rules apply also for these, let's say, additional functions. And uh, always we try to keep it, let's say, simple, yeah? not to implement something very complex. Yeah? Also, the, the same imply, uh, implies for electrical systems. So we should be able to, let's say, detect faults in uh, the electrical system of the plant and to switch off uh, some of the, the parts of the, of the, let's say, uh, scheme or uh, the buses which are, let's say, faulty or again, everything is aimed to, let's say, prevent propagation of failures. So we can use some safety relays, some uh, circuit breakers uh, to, let's say, isolate the faulty part of the, of the uh, electric, electric uh, uh, system. Okay, this is about margins. We heard and discussed this topic, I think, in the first day. So, in fact, the margins and conservatism, it, 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 it applies also for INC systems. So, just a reminder, so there is some safety limit, which is basically some, let's say, physical limit of the equipment, which we really don't want to reach. So then we have some analytical limit. So this is something which is used in analysis. So there are some margin which takes account some takes into uh, the account some uh, uncertainty uncertainties. And uh, here is the normal operation. So in the normal operation, uh, this is where the control system, let's say, tries to to keep the process. But if something goes wrong and the process, let's say, turn from the normal conditions to some abnormal or, let's say, accidental conditions, so we have to have some limit from where the, let's say, safety systems start uh, its operations, start to provide the safety functions. And this, let's say, set point or threshold is, uh, again, let's say, set with regard, or it takes into account some, let's say, margin, some conservatism. And the margin has to take into account, okay, some, let's say, that the instrumentation is not perfect, there are some, let's say, measurement errors, there are, for example, some response times that when uh, the technology reach this strip or this threshold, so it can take time for the INC systems to evaluate uh, to, let's say, provide the, the action, and perhaps then it takes some time, the technology itself have some, uh, l l l let's say, it takes time to cope with the, let's say, safety action. It, it could take time to, to, to see the results of, of, of this. So, again, margins and conservatism is applied in the INC systems as well, as you heard about it before. And uh, so if, if this is, let's say, threshold for the safety system, and this is, let's say, some normal operation where the control systems work, so the, let's say, limitation system will be somewhere in, in between. Yeah? So again, the defense in depth. So first we have the control systems. If something goes wrong, 
So then somewhere here should be, let's say, some limitation system, which try to, let's say, put it backwards to the normal operation, but if it's breached as well, so then we have the safety systems to, to, to cope with this, with this situation. So, so margins are implemented here as well. So, so, so this one, yeah? Okay, so, so basically, so to, to start with, we have the safety analysis. The safety analysis is, uh, let's say, the major source of the information for this, because during the anal safety analysis, we evaluate different scenarios. So, so for example, if there is a, a steam line break, so we, we will, it will develop, and in a certain time, in certain, and there will be some, for example, some, some uh, let's say, range, in which the, let's say, safety action has to be provided in order not to reach the, this limit. This is the maximum limit, and in the safety analysis, it's uh, calculated in a different, let's say, time sequence, in specific time sequence, okay, there is an event in uh, when uh, the, let's say, technological parameters reach uh, some, let's say, threshold, then it operates, and then it's, there's some time sequence where, let's say, the process should, let's say, return or stabilize, and, but basically we don't want to, to let's say, uh, breach this analytical limit. And the, the proof is basically the safety analysis, and uh, the basis are, let's say, the uh, errors in the measurements, time response, uh, time, time response of the uh, INC equipment, and also the behavior of the, of the technology itself, because for some safety action, the result is very quick, but for some, for example, some heat removal, it can take time. Yeah? So we have to, let's say, operate it uh, uh, to have enough time to, let's say, stabilize the process and not, not to reach this, this, this limit. Is it okay like this? Or? Okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's not easy. Yeah? There is no e easy way how, and uh, there is no, let's say, prescribed values, it has to be calculated for the, let's say, specific design to, to, to see what the, the, the values have to be. Yeah. So, so, So basically, on, based on safety analysis, in, you, you have this limit or analytical limit. Usually this is set by oper, uh, regulator. You have some limits which you cannot breach because you, then uh, you, there will be the possibility that you can lose, for example, the integrity of, uh, of, the, of the system or you, you lose the, let's say, fundamental safety functions. But uh, again, in the design, and it, it depends on the, let's say, how it's organized uh, by the operator. But usually, what, as, far as, I, as, far, as far as I know, the safety analysis are usually done by, let's say, operator or by some hired third party. So it depends if the, let's say, operator, the plant has the cap capability to, to, let's say, calculate or evaluate the safety analysis. So, so very often you, you, let's say, pay for some, let's say, other company which has the capability and the tools to, to do that. But uh, it can be done this, uh, there are two, two, two ways. This tape set points, it can, can be defined by the designer. If you, let's say, buy the, the safety system from him and you give him the, these, these limits, so he, the designer can calculate the safety analysis, provide it to you, and show you that, okay, I set the set points like this, and this is the proof, I calculate the analysis, so you have, let's say, you will not breach the, the, this limit, so it can be done like this, but at the end, you as an operator have to check to see if it was done properly, if they include everything what they should include, and also then uh, the regulator is the one who would like to see this, to, to see the analysis and the results, to, to, to see, to evaluate, okay, if, and, and ask the question if, okay, do you consider this and that? Yeah, so, so, so more ways are possible. You, you, you can buy this service, but nevertheless, you as an operator are responsible. Yeah? 
you are responsible, your ultimate responsibility for the safe plant is up to you. Yeah? So yeah, you have to check and uh, not to believe everything what the supplier tells you, but to, to check that, okay, it's some reasonable and, and ask questions. We, usually what the regulator, uh, let's say, approved is usually this, this one, yeah. And you have to show to regulator that if you, that, that you set, for example, some specific value, that you are, let's say, below this limit. So this is what the regulator are, is interesting for, for. So the regulator usually is interested to, to know that in never, let's say, combination of condition you will breach this, this limit. Did, did it, and it, for, for them it's perhaps not very important what the specific value is, but the result is that it can be breached. So, so this is what, let's say, is essential for the regulator. But for the plant operator, you have to, let's say, deal with specific value in the system. Eh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, it could be very different. Usually, the, the evaluation that the system can work for example, the digital system, with the, which, which is quite simple, it, it works, for example, it's like milliseconds. So for example, one cycle can be 100 or 50 milliseconds. Then you have some, let's say, uh, delay uh, uh, introduced by the sensor itself. The sensor, and it depends on the, let's say, physical, let's say approach how the, how physically the, the, the sensor works. So it can be, let's say, from, let's say, milliseconds to two seconds. Yeah? Be, because, for example, if you measure some, let's say, lower neutron power, so it can, it can, it, it, uh, can take more time to, let's say, count, for example, the pulses to evaluate what, what, the, what the level of uh, neutron power is, for example. So it could be defer from milliseconds to seconds. And uh, also you have to consider uh, if, if there are some communication links, so there are some cycles to, for the information to travel from the sensor to the, let's say, system, INC system itself, and then from the INC systems to the actuator. So you have to, let's say, evaluate all the chain. You usually do that for some, let's say, typical, you can, let's say, build some typical chain to, for analysis. So, because usually the INC equipment runs in some pred predetermined or predefined li li loop. Uh, you have some different types of sensors which behave, let's say, in the same way. So, so you can have some, let's say, five or six typical chains which you evaluate for the, let's say, response time. Eh? But it's, it, it's not easy, it requires the, the knowledge. You have to know every, let's say, part of the chain to be able to, 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 to find out or to estimate what the time will be. Yeah. Can you give an example of this kind of thing? Uh, some example of, 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 the, of these values? Okay, I, I will have to find out maybe from my plan some, some example. Okay, I don't, I, I don't remember the, the specific number. So, so, so perhaps, it, because it's very, very different for each, each plant and each design. So, 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 for, so for, for example, uh, it could be, for example, temperature in the uh, primary circuit. So uh, perhaps, I don't remember exactly, the analytical limit could be something like 310 degrees. And uh, the trip set point will be, will be something like 305 degrees. So it can be something like that. So, so the margin here, it's, it depends on the, let's say, the technological process for which it applies. Yeah, but it's, let's say, between 1 and 10 percent, yeah? so something like that, yeah? usually. OK. So. Qualification, we have spoken about it uh, morning, so let's skip the qualification. Testability and maintainability. So 
In fact, uh, the systems which are important to safety should be designed that we can, let's say, test them and, uh, let's say, maintain them. So why, uh, let's say, why we need to test the, the systems? Because we have to be sure that uh, the system is still in good condition and uh, it's, let's say, it, it, it's, it's functioning. And uh, of course, the maintenance maintenance activities. So there can be some activities which are, let's say, as a result from from the qualification. But also there can be some, let's say, corrective maintenance because something can fail. So we have to be to able to, let's say, put the system back to the, let's say, uh, operational status. So so we have to in the design we have to consider that the system have to be tested somehow and we have to be able to to repair this. There can be some, let's say, specific task as a sensor like a sensor calibration and, uh, and and things like that. So, so just we have to keep in mind that such activities are also important during the lifetime of the of the equipment. So, let's say provision of the testing, the scope of frequency of the tests are usually based on some, let's say, reliability calculation and based on some, for example, mean time between failures. And also, the, the systems very often have some, let's say, self-testing capabilities. So, let's say, quite usually, a large portion of the system can be tested online automatically. But there are usually some portions which are not covered by self-test. So then we have to periodically test to see if there are no error, no no faults in this, let's say, part which is not covered by the self-test. Uh, what is uh, also important? We have to be careful that if we implement some, let's say, testing tool, that we do not, let's say, compromise the independence or introduce some common cause failure. Because in some design, for example, you can have some specific testing equipment which is, connect, which is connected uh, to all of, for example, three or four divisions, and just is, let's say, activated for one division, then for another division, and so on. So we have to be to you have to be very careful to evaluate that such, let's say, common equipment cannot, let's say, cause the common cause failure of all the safety divisions. Yeah. So this is some, let's say, consideration that, okay, there can be some, let's say, exceptions, because sometimes it's not possible to test everything whenever we need. So there are some, let's say, specific parts of equipment uh, which are which it's possible to test only, for example, during the OTGs. So then we have to, let's say, consider that if there are some equipment which are, for example, not accessible during the operation, so they have to be, let's say, reliable enough that, for example, the testing them once uh, once a year is is sufficient. Yeah. So it's it's possible, but just to know that if something fails very often. So we most probably will need to test it more often. And if there is something which is not easily accessible, so we have to put something more reliable there. And what usually is done is, let's say, overlapping tests. So basically, it's usually it's not possible to test every, all the chain, everything together. So usually it's some combination of some self-tests, of some, let's say, tests of some specific parts, which, let's say, overlap a little bit. And then we are able to evaluate from for example, three or four overlapping tests that that uh, the all let's say safety group or the all the chain is let's say in, in in good in good shape. What is also important if we test safety system or the safety group or safety division or safety train or whatever we call it. So one thing we have to be able to, let's say, properly identify the system. It, it seems quite obvious, but there were, let's say, uh, very, let's say, severe, uh, and there were also deaths caused by the maintenance personnel didn't recognize the, let's say, equipment, which was, let's say, dedicated, or let's say, where, where they're supposed to work, and they go to another place, and were killed, for example, by, uh, by the electric current. So there should be, let's say, some methods and uh, clear identification of what the equipment, what is it, so, so to be able to identify all the equipment at the plant clearly. clearly. And uh, also, we have to be careful that uh, if we 
put some part of the safety system offline or by bypass it for the testing. So it should be indicated. We have to know that uh, some portion of the system is offline for, for the tests. And uh, we don't want to, to stay it in, 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 in the test uh, like uh, unwanted even. So after the test, we have to be able to, to switch it back on. And the operator should have some, let's say, information that, okay, the system is now running in full configuration. So also some, let's say, information should be provided and uh, consider consideration should be provided to the fact that we have to be able to identify that the system is under testing and uh, that the system is offline for some reason. Spare parts, yeah, we have discussed yeah, these topics, so I think we will not spend a lot of time on this. So we, we spoke mainly about the qualification, so there are also another, let's say, aspects of the spare parts. So the availability of the spare parts, uh, the storage conditions. Yeah, some some spare parts are let's say sensitive, so we have to put them in the, some specific conditions or test them also, because after, for example, 15 years in the warehouse, maybe they will not work. And configuration management is more about quality, but we have to be able to identify what happened to our equipment. If there are some spare parts were used or some portion of the equipment were repaired, so we have to be able to trace the history of the changes of the, of the equipment to, to be able to prove that, okay, it's, the equipment is all the time good enough, it's still qualified to provide the function when needed under the conditions, uh, expected conditions. So spare parts, supporting systems. So from the point of view of, let's say, electrical and INC systems, so let's say quite usual Supporting system is uh, the air conditioning. There are many systems which require, let's say, cooling or air conditioning to, to, to keep it in the, let's say, qualified state in the mild, con mild condition or mild environment. Uh, when such, let's say, support or auxiliary system is necessary for the, let's say, correct performance of the, of the, of the system. So it has to have the same, let's say, qualification, the same requirements apply also for this system. So for example, when I need air conditioning to my safety divisions, so then I have to have, if I have four safety divisions, so I have to have four independent air conditioning for each of the division. So same requirements apply if it is, let's say, necessary for the, let's say, proper uh, safety function of the, of the equipment. Management process. So several times we have mentioned that, let's say, quality assurance is everywhere. So I think uh, it's not, not necessary to spend uh, much words on this, but also the, the, the high quality development process. So again, the high quality development process, especially for the complex systems, is very important and is, let's say, one of the basic requirements that have, we have to implement such, let's say, process that we are sure that all the safety requirements are correctly implemented in all phases of the design. And uh, there are cases that at the end, when the let's say, equipment is ready and manufactured, so perhaps not everything is possible to test. So that's why we have to, let's say, be interested how the design process was carried out and perhaps to check the manufacturer how he, let's say, provide, how, how, how he, let's say, do the activities. Uh, again, it's about uh, design process itself. So I think we have, we have mentioned it already, so, so let's skip this to have maybe time for some uh, discussion. So now we are, let's say, more about some more specific about digital systems. Because nowadays in uh, nuclear power plants, in older one, there are some, let's say, modernization activities in new builds. Uh, most probably you will, let's say, find digital systems. It also as, as a uh, safety systems as well, not only in, in the field of INC, but also we will find digital systems in, in electrical, let's say, systems. Because digital, there are, it's starting with some smart devices. 
and continues uh, to some, let's say, very complex PC-based PC -based system. So again, we have specific requirements that uh, we have to be very careful about the all, let's say, life cycle of such, let's say, complex or digital or computer-based computer -based system. So some, let's say, basic characteristics of the digital systems. So in fact, why we use it? Because as you, as you have listened or heard that, okay, we have some concerns about common cause failure, about the high quality development process. So, so perhaps it would be better to avoid them completely. So maybe yes, but they have some advantage, uh, advantages. So first you can implement very complex functions. So which usually can be, uh, let's say very user friendly HMI. Uh, there can buy some, be some specific, let's say, um, analytical functions, and uh, you can Im implement almost everything you, you, you need. So this is, this is, let's say, pros, but on the other hand, it, it can be quite complex, difficult to test, and there can be some hidden faults if it's too complex. It's quite flexible, so uh, you can easily, let's say, change if it's not, let's say, if you find out that something uh, for example, some set points can be changed or some algorithms, so it's not so difficult. But again, there are some concerns about, let's say, configuration management. We have to, let's say, tra trace all the changes and about also cybersecurity because uh, we don't want that someone changed something which we don't like to be changed. It's easy to reuse, so it can be very effective. For, when I, I can develop the software for, let's say, one safety division, and then, let's say, very easily migrate it to other divisions, so the development process can be very effective and may, maybe a little bit cheaper than when I need to, to develop every, let's say, uh, safety division separately. But again, common cause failure, I can, uh, let's say, by this copy and paste, I can introduce the uh, same faults in other, other division. So improved diagnostic, self-test, this is very, very good, we, we like that. Again, too much complex. Digital systems, yeah, it's discrete systems, so they can be some, let's say, sampling problems or some unpredicted transients between, for example, different digital systems, communication links. They are quite small, so in very small, small form factor, in small chip, we can implement a lot of functions but there are some specific conditions. So for the, remember that the, elect, the uh, silicon chip don't like high temperatures, don't like radiation, so we have to consider this. And, okay, complex functions. Okay, I think it's, it's okay. So, so, so this picture is just to, let's say, demonstrate where we can find the digital system and how, let's say, complex they can be. It's usually not obvious very, very quickly that for example, we can have some smart devices which can have firmware. Firmware can be, let's say, pre-developed or specifically configured for our, let's say, application. Then we have some, let's say, INC or electrical system with some, let's say, specific customized application functions, usually with some, let's say, system or operating software. Uh, there could be different libraries, specific configuration. We can have let's say standard PC-based, for example, some PC-based diagnostic system with, for example, Windows operating system, specific application which is configured. And apart from that, we, during the process, we need, we need very, let's say, a variety of the digital and test, uh, design and testing tools. We have source code, we have tools for maintenance and diagnostic, we have a lot of documentation, we have spare parts, because we have the spare parts, so we have to, let's say, take care that we have the same, for example, firmware version, which is compatible with the rest of the equipment, which can be also a problem to, let's say, trace all these, let's say, links in between, software backups. So, so the digital systems can be really complex. They have advantages, but we have to, let's say, consider all these elements have to be, let's say, consistent to each other. And uh, let's say qualified, the systems have to be qualified properly as we have mentioned uh, uh, morning. And the high quality development process is one, let's say, one of the key, key element of this, let's say, qualification and we will speak about it also. 
so I just would like to draw, draw your attention that we don't have only, let's say, software-based. We have also FPGA. I think you already heard, you, you perhaps know what FPGA is. It's also, let's say, digital technology, but uh, it used a little bit different, let's say, uh, approach. So while the software-based is the silicon chip, basically transistors, together with some operating or system software, which provide the interface between the chip and the application software. So FPGA is also integrated circuit, but uh, in this circuit there are, it's the field of uh, programmable gate arrays. It's usually, it's uh, AND, XOR, and uh, flip-flop arrays, which are, let's say, connected together, and doing the, let's say, programming, we just, let's say, connect different, uh, different gates together, so the result is, in fact, the hardware. It's a specific chip where are burned connections between the gates uh, without, in fact, any software. So this is specific. It's, it has some advantages, but uh, also some, let's say, some consideration has to be uh, taken into account. So, so, so the development process, it's almost the same. Also, in, uh, so in both, these digital systems, you need really, let's say, well-established and well-controlled uh, design process. You also use very complex tools. Uh, so, uh, for, for both of them, uh, in both of them, you can have some, let's say, pre-developed items, some, some tools, libraries, something which you have to, let's say, have perhaps problems during the qualification. What is good for this? FPGA, the complexity is much lower, really. So, so this is a good thing. Uh, the bad thing that if we really want to implement something really complex, typically HMI, so the, the software-based systems can be better for this. Processing, sequential parallel, design. Uh, it's, so, so there are some similarities, but uh, these type of digital systems are nowadays, let's say, used more often in the in the plan design and uh, the plan systems as, as well. So now, at least a few words about the design process. We have mentioned it several times that it's important. So, to, so, um, so a few words. I don't know if someone of you is programming as a job or as a hobby. I don't know if you program at something, maybe at university. So when I usually program something at home, so I usually do like this. Yeah? I just throw the code and try and f find out that it doesn't work and, and so on. So this is used very often in that's a normal life, but this is not good enough for the, let's say, nuclear application. So in, uh, for nuclear or safety systems or safety related systems, uh, the design process, how it's, let's say, recommended is like this, this, let's say, V-shaped development or design process. This was taken directly from the INC safety guide. Uh, the let's say characteristic of this, it's uh, sequential. It's very let's say well defined. You have specific steps, and you have defined interfaces between all the steps. So it's very well controlled, well described. Uh, the problem is it's quite uh, inflexible. It's quite rigid. And if you here, if you find out that you ha you have to change something here, so it's quite difficult. You have to go back and go through all these steps again. So, but basically, this approach is let's say incorporated in all the let's say standards for the let's say safety systems development, which I saw here. So, for in IEC standard, IEEE standards, IEA. So, so this is considered to be good practice how to develop develop the, let's say, the, the software, or let's say that also the hardware. Perhaps it's not the only, it's a recommendation, but this is something which, what, what, what is used. I will not describe all the steps. There are a lot of literature on this, so you can study, you can find on the internet many information. So let's, 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 let's continue. I, I would just like to mention some, let's say, specific, specific issues uh, with regard to this design process. So first of all, everything starts with very good planning. So everything has to be planned and described. So the process, the interfaces have to be really, very well described before we start. And this is something which usually, 
let's say the operator and also the regulator would like to see, to have some proof that the process will be, let's say, well controlled, that uh, the, let's say, design codes uh, will be, let's say, implemented properly. One of the most important, let's say, steps, if, let's say, specification, requirement specification, it's the, right on the beginning when we, let's say, prepare the specification the requirements, how the system should, let's say, be built, what, what the system should do, uh, what the requirements are. This is, according to the operational experience, this is the major source of the, of the failures. And uh, the problem is, that either the requirement is not, let's say, clearly adequately stated, or maybe it's not understood by the designer. So this is typically this is the communication error. So when I need something, I will I will try to describe, but someone else read it and understand it a little bit different. So very often these requirements are not complete. They are perhaps not correct, and they are not clear. Yeah? And so so this is the result of. Uh, so, and if, if we find it at the end of the development process, so we have to go back and it could be very, let's say, demanding to, to correct. And uh, so very, let's say, attention has to be paid to the initial steps of the, of the design. Because the design process itself then use this throughout all the design steps, and if there are mistakes is made in the beginning, so it, then it goes through all the design to, to, to the end. And also, that, that's why, the, for example, the function diversity is quite effective, because if you, let's say, describe requirements for two different functions, so usually there's a lower probability that on, on both description, on both requirements, there will be some, let's say, misunderstanding, but on the other hand, if you have the same function, which is described somehow, and the same function is implemented in two different designs, so even if you have, let's say, design diversity, but if you implement un uncorrect or wrong requirements, so then you can have common cause fail implemented in the, let's say, the different systems as well. Yeah? So specification faults, you have, you have to be very careful about, about this and put attention to the beginning of the, of the, of the process. So there are some, we have already mentioned, so com complexity should be avoided, the system should be simple, predictable, and, and, and so on. So let's skip this. Verification and validation. Verification and validation, we, I think we had some discussions. Verification, it's, it's let's say, ongoing process. So during the whole design process, we have to check to verify that the output of one activity is, let's say, good enough to, to continue with the, another activity. We have to verify or check, let's say, the different documents which are produced. And at the end, there is a validation, validation, something like, let's say, the final evaluation of the requirements and uh, the approval of the, let's say, product that, okay, it complies with its requirement and it's good enough to, let's say, integrate with the plant and, and, and so on. So this is the difference between verification and validation. Here are some, let's say, approaches. This is based on, let's say, experience, how, how it is done. It's not, let's say, prescribed anywhere, anywhere. What is prescribed or what is required? So the, let's say, verification and validation team, VNV team, there should be some, let's say, independence. There should be independence uh, uh, in, uh, let's say, management. There should be independence in money. So it should be independent enough to get us really, let's say, let's say valid, valid results. So, so what, what are the approaches as I, I saw during different projects? So, so the most, let's say, independent approach is that, okay, you use for the VNV activities completely third party, another company. So this is the, let's say, most independent solution. The drawback is that it can be quite, let's say, time demanding, maybe very quite, let's say, also expensive, because usually the third party have, don't have perhaps the specific knowledge of the, of the system itself, so there have to be a lot of communication, but it's, let's say, completely independent. And another approach is to have, let's say, independent VNV team inside, inside supplier organization. 
so it could be, let's say, more, let's say, maybe time effective because this VNV team inside supplier perhaps know the processes, know the system itself. So perhaps it could work, let's say, more, let's say, effectively. On the other hand, you can see that the independence is not so strong here. So if such approach is, let's say, adopted, we have to be very careful to evaluate that the VNV team has sufficiently independent management, independent people, and some, let's say, specified budget to do the activities. Because we don't want the supplier, let's say, cut the budget for the team and tell them, okay, don't check it, it's okay. We have to be sure. So then for utility and perhaps regulator, there's more effort to, to evaluate that there is enough independence. But it, it, it can be done. And uh, let's say least independent is, let's say, independence in bit, just in the design team. Such approach is usually used only for, let's say, some safety related. It's, I had never saw such approach for safety systems. And basically, one guy do the software, and another guy check it, and vice versa. Yeah, so only for some, let's say, safety related systems, such approach can be used under certain conditions. So this is some, let's say, possible approaches to, to VNV, VNV activities. Yeah, system validation, I have mentioned at, at the end to validate that all requirements are met. Okay, everything has to be documented and recorded. Again, quality assurance, a lot of documentation. Um, then, when the system is installed at, at the plant, so you have to consider that usually there have to be some specific testing because not everything is possible to test, let's say, at manufacturers or at, at factory. So you have to test the interfaces. Maybe you need to test some, let's say, maintenance procedures. Because for, from designer, you've perhaps received some, let's say, recommendation how to maintain the system. So we will need to check that, okay, it, it, it works like, like it is described. And basically, uh, I have already mentioned all of these from, from all the design process, there is a lot of documentation. And the documentation is not only for, let's say, licensing, but also we need, let's say, detailed documentation then during the operation when we try to find some, some let's say, some behavior of the system. So we have to be able to have some source of information to, to, to find out how the system works, how it is, let's say, built, how it is, how it is interconnected. And when we, let's say, would like to make some design change later, so we need to have enough documentation to be able to, let's say, approve, to, to, to provide, to, to, to plan, to, let's say, think about how, how, to, how to change it uh, in, in, in a safe way. Very, let's say, big topic is traceability. This is a very, very big topic and quite challenging. I think in, in, in every project I saw, there were some problems with this. Because traceability, it means that uh, you have to be able to trace all the requirements just from the beginning as you specify them through the design to the very end of the, let's say, of, 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 the, of the design process to the validation. So at the end, you have to be able to validate that all the requirements which you stated at the beginning were, let's say, incorporated into the design and tested at the end. So it's, in fact, the clear link a link between the requirements, between the design, between the testing. And you can imagine that there is a lot of requirements. There are many sources of requirements from the, the licensing point of view, different standards. So it's not very easy. There are some, let's say, out, there are tools which can support these activities, but it's, it's, let's say, more about, let's say, quality assurance, this one, but it's required to have such traceability. And it's really very challenging, challenging issue. The human factor engineering. We haven't mentioned it. There will be, I think that there is some, let's say, specific presentation on that topic. I would like to, let's say, just mention that the human factor engineering is, let's say, INC and electrical systems very often are usually have some interfaces with the people. So we always have to consider this these factors. Very often, I, at least according to my experience in some, let's say, design changes is underestimated, but it's integral part of the design process. During the requirements, during the evaluation of the design, we always have to think of the interface with the, with the people. So we have to evaluate, okay, 
how the people will interact with our systems. We have to classify the, let's say, human machine interface items. So we have to know which one are, let's say, important to safety, which perhaps not. And uh, also we have to find out if uh, the operator is required to provide some manual action. So we have to be able to prove that he has, let's say, enough information to, to decide that the action is needed. And he has, let's say, the means how to operate the equipment. So these are, let's say, basic considerations which we have to, let's say, consider during the design. So it's not only about, let's say, the functions uh, it, itself, but it's also about the, the, the human factors. Okay, so let's speak at least a little bit about cybersecurity as well, just some very basic, basic uh, information. Nowadays, it's quite a hot topic because the systems which are using the, let's say, standard IT or computer-based technology are now, nowadays used very often in the plants as well. These systems are usually interconnected to each other. And uh, so the cybersecurity starts to be, let's say, the issue as well. So in the SSR slash 2, you don't find anything special about cybersecurity. You just find that you, can, you, ha you have to prevent unauthorized access. This was usually, let's say, taken from the point of your physical access to the equipment. That, okay, you have some fans, you have some guards, you have some locks, so, so no one which is not authorized can, cannot, let's say, do something with your equipment. But now with, let's say, digital world, you can have also digital access. If the systems are connected to the, for example, plant information system and the plant information system is connected to the corporate network, corporate network is connected to the internet, so there, there can be find some let's say links from the outside world to the to the inside the plant. So so now this requirement has also some let's say a little bit other meaning. IEA is working in IEA. There is NSS 17. So this is one specific document uh, concerning cybersecurity. And I think that in preparation there are I think several documents three or four specific documents with regard to cybersecurity. I think, I, I, I'm not sure they were not issued yet, I think. But the IEA is also, let's say, paid quite attention to this, to this, to this topic. So, so basically, when we, when we use digital systems at the plant, so we have to deal with the consequences of, of cyber compromise. So, 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 so this, this is, a, this is the, the, the basic message. So here are some, let's say, specifics. Uh, we have, let's say, cybersecurity problems because we use standard IT technology. It's because perhaps other is not available. It's, it, it, it's cheap. It's usually well proven. So also nowadays in, for example, PLCs, you, you can find some, some Unix or some, some Linux operating system. So the standard IT technology is more and more used in the, in the systems. And not only INC, but also in, uh, in uh, electrical systems as well, but INC is, let's say, the, the most, the major user of this, of, the, of this technology. But on the other hand, IT technology has some, let's say, characteristic, but INC systems has a little bit different purpose, a different characteristic, which can lead to, to some problems. So, for example, we, we usually work in, in real time uh, with limited resources. So it, it means that it's it's problem for us to implement some specific cybersecurity, let's say, measures, some antivirus or things like that, because it can increase the complex complexness of the system. Maybe we have not enough resources for that. We need the systems in, let's say, high availability. So we don't want to, let's say, switch it on and off very often. Usually with IT, it's not, not a concern. Uh, Other things, for example, what is quite important, usually the INC systems we operate for a long, long, long time, 10, 20 years, it's, it's possible with some PLCs. So it's clear that from the IT point of view, these systems are obsolete without any support. And, uh, okay. 
very often there are some, let's say, proprietary systems. So we, are quite, we have, let's say, quite limited access to some, let's say, more resources and, and, uh, and, 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 and so on. So, so IT systems are used in the INC, but INC has specific characteristics which somehow limit us how to use some cybersecurity measures. And we have to, let's say, take care. Take care. The, the most important is that usually in IT, the, the confidentiality, the confidentiality of the, of the data is usually the most important things because there are some sticky data, some financial data, personal data, and things like that. But for INC system, usually there is not very secret. But the problem is integrity and the availability. We need to have correct data in the right time. Yeah? So these are the big differences. OK, so how, 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 to, how to deal with it? So basically, again, some, let's say, defense in death principle applies also in this, in this approach. So again, graded approach is used also in the cybersecurity. Uh, we will not speak about details because it's a very specific topic. But here is some, some example how, how it could be implemented just to give you really some, let's say, very rough, let's say, example how, how, it, could, how it could work. So on the, let's say, most protected level, there is the protection system. Then we have some, for example, some process control system. We implement just one-way communication link because we don't want to, let's say, uh, harm or loss, lose the uh, protection system from, from the outside. Then uh, we can have some, for example, process information system. Very often this also one way. Then we have some, let's say, support system. It's for work permits and so on. So these are, let's say, it, it has influence on the operation, but maybe there is no influence on safety. And we have some, for example, office systems, emails, uh, financial systems, things like that. So, so this is one possibility. How it is was, for example, suggested by NRC, a guide. You can download, download uh, this regulatory guide about cybersecurity. We can read more about it. It's quite detailed. Uh, you can also download the IEA NSS 17 document. You have more information on that. Uh, so before we finish and have some, let's say, enough time for, for, for some discussions, because we don't have enough time before lunch. So just I would like to maybe emphasize some, some myths about the cybersecurity. These were publicized, I don't know, 2009. Still, when I speak with some people, they still are very persistent in, in this. So I just would like to, let's say, to, to share the very often, let's say, misunderstanding. So, so the first thing is that, OK, when you speak with the people, so very co common answer is, my system is isolated. So I don't need to t take care about cybersecurity. It's somewhere in the plant, locked in the cabinet, and so, so why? The problem is that very often you will find some communication links in between some upper layer systems. Uh, if not uh, the links, so you have some maintenance work, which use some diagnostic tool, for example, some, let's say, laptop or diagnostic notebook, which is used, uh, let's say, to, to connect to, to the system to, for some diagnostic and, and so on, and which can introduce the, let's say, and bring some, let's say, malicious, let's say, code from, from outside. So nothing is, let's say, really isolated. This is the first thing. I have just only one way communication links. So this is a good thing. We really want to implement them. But it is not so easy to prove that the link is just only one way. It's not so easy. There are some specific devices, devices called data diodes which, let's say, in a hardware way can, let's say, provide one-way communication. But very often, even if the communication is, let's say, standard communication, and from the logical point of view, the one system send the data to another system. So very often, we'll find some, let's say, on the system level, some handshake, some, let's say, communication, some questions on the system level between the systems. So very often, the one-way is not as one-way as it should be. I have firewall or antivirus, so I'm secure. So it's good to have firewall or antivirus. This is a good thing. But in this field, there is no simple solution. Always there could be, it's, let's say, never-ending battle between the, the, the black guys and the white guys. 
and always the antivirus or firewall is not 100% secure. So always we have to implement some more, let's say, levels in, in, in depth, more, more barriers, because no antivirus is able to find 100% of all malicious code. You have something called zero-day vulnerabilities, so it's vulnerabilities which are, let's say, not yet publicly known. So perhaps the antivirus don't know that such uh, code exists. So this is also not truth. And also what was, let's say, very often in the INC and specifically in the nuclear, security by obscurity. So it was, okay, my, my system is so specific, developed by company X, y, X company or by Y company or whatever. So it's very specific. No one knows how it really works. So no one can, let's say, harm me. So still this could be true for a very specific system. But as I mentioned, very often nowadays, the, also the INC, PLCs and so on use, let's say, standard technology, standard communication links, which are well defined. Uh, you can find the definition of the, let's say, communication protocols on the internet. And also the industrial devices was, are, and could be, let's say, target of, of, of an attack. So, so, so be careful if you will speak with someone. So most probably you will hear some of these. So be very, very cautious about, about these, these, these myths. OK, uh, maybe one of the last things. There is a very specific requirement that we have to be very careful. So when we, when we implement, the, let's say, some security measures, we don't want to harm the safety. Because it would be very easy. And here, you can feel, you can see that there are some contradicting requirements. On one hand, we want to have the system secure as, as, as much as possible. But on the other hand, it has to be simple. It has to be, we have to be able to test it. And uh, we don't want to, to, to block the system, for example, for the operator. We don't want the situation when the operator needs to, to let's say, information. And then the system tells him log out and uh, the wrong password. You have to con contact the hotline to get new password and something like this. this so, so the security measures should not and shall not compromise uh, the safety measures and vice versa. Yeah? So this is quite, let's say, challenging because we have contradicting requirements and we have to deal with it somehow. Yeah? OK, so just at the end of the presentation, I put some, let's say, content of design bases for INC and electrical system systems is just for your reference to, to see, okay, what, what type of information you, you should find in the design basis. I will not go through it. I think it's no, no sense. We have already mentioned all of these, let's say, specific things. So I think this is all about the, let's say, if you would like to use it so you can read it at the presentation. So it's just as a reference for you. Everything. That, and yeah, at the end, you have references. So Mostly I use this one, but you have more of these. So you can, you can find out, uh, most of them you can find out for free in, in, in the internet and, and use for your, for your, let's say, use. Okay, so let's stop here to have some, some time for some, let's say, uh, discussions or questions. It was a lot of information. It's, so I think you are exhausted after this, so, but if there are any questions, so please, we can, or maybe some, some, someone of you have some, let's say, experience, which can be shared with, with the others, so, so some, some remark, so, so please, if any questions or remarks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Yeah. So it is important not only to make sure this mm. is very new, mm. but to train your people uh, how not to cause any harm to your systems and also mm. and how to discover the insiders. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, this is a very good remark. Thank you for that. It's very important. And in fact, according to the let's say experience, the the, 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 the most let's say harm was done by insiders, yeah. Because the insiders have the information, usually they have the access. 
maybe some of the harm was not maybe un intended. It, it can be also unintended. But oh, yeah, usually the maintenance staff, they can unintentionally, let's say, put some, some, some code, some, some USB flash disk to, to, with, with some, some code, so may, perhaps it's not intentional, but yeah, this is very, very, very important to be, we have to be careful about internal people, we have to train them, so the awareness of the cybersecurity is very important. It's very difficult because the, usually the people fight it because the cybersecurity, it, let's say, quite restrictive. It's put some restriction on how the people are used to work. So they usually don't like it because they are forced to, for example, check the, the system or perhaps they cannot do it the way they were used before. So it's important to explain why it is. And yeah, for insiders, according to my experience, we also have some issues always from insiders. Yeah. Very good, thank you very much for this. A any remark or question or some notion or from experience to be shared with, with the audience? Okay, so maybe we can also, if something came up, so we can discuss at the end of the day. So I think now we can, we can have a break and uh, we will continue at 16, so 4 p.m. Okay, so thank you for your attention and 